Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. I've got a new hashtag. I'm now the armor wizard, Hocus Pocus Defeatus Armorist. Our armor for destruction today is from Militech. This is their level three slash three plus pure polyethylene. This guy is two pounds, 14 ounces. It's an approximately 1.175 inches thick, so a rather thick guy. It is multi-curve. I do believe maybe there's two or three curves there. I've seen plates with more curves, but that's fairly curvy. This is a 10 by 12 model that we have here. If this is the first time you're stopping by my channel, I do things a little different over here. I'm very data oriented. I try to stick to a lot of NIJ constants so that we have this big lump of raw data that we can take away from this test, especially if you're the manufacturer, like I've said before. If I find some kind of threat that this plate stops in my testing, it may be valuable to you as a manufacturer to send that off to an accredited NIJ lab and have it actually special threat tested. So since this is rifle armor, I shoot at 45 feet. I also shoot at zero degrees because that is worst case scenario for this armor. This does not employ a ceramic strike face, so I do not have to drop it on its face. Now, because we need a compressible media behind our body armor for it to actually work as it was against your body. We have this giant clay briefcase right here filled with Roma Plastilina number one clay donated by Chavant. Now be, again, I'm talking about all those NIJ constants. It is 80 degrees out here today, but the clay hasn't been out in the sun a lot, so it's only about 65, 70 degrees. So the clay is oil-based, so the warmer that it gets, the more that it is, or the softer that it gets, and more of that back face that it will show. So out here, we're just gonna kind of get a representation of that back face. Also at the beginning, we put a giant spreadsheet that foreshadows all the different rounds that I'm gonna shoot at it. I think because this is polyeth polyethylene, we have a few different threats that I wanna see if it can pass on our testing. Like all of our polyethylene plates, I always start with our SBR. That gives us a real world engagement at range, and I have two threats that I always think are a good idea. I have a subsonic M855A1 that actually simulates, I think, over five or 600 yards. Then we have M855. That is a 62 grain full metal jacket with a conical steel tip. That is full velocity. The M855A1 is the evolution of that one. We have a 10 and a half inch SBR with a Yankee Hill Turbo 556 suppressor on there. We got the primary arms 3X Cyclops love that optic so far the really large acs reticle acss reticle i think the only disadvantage is the eye relief is shorter speaking of eyes got some new eye protection here this is from gators these are their specter lines they are all aluminum frames with ANSI rated lenses for any ricochets these are the high high contrast model got the link in the description below so if you do the whole affiliate thing where you click the link to buy something clicking that helps me help you and it costs nothing the sun's starting to get in my eyes a little bit Ten seventy. and this will be full power And to continue with our M855 threats, we brought out our 16 inch. I'd like to get a 14 and a half inch at one point as a go between if we get penetrations on the 16, but I haven't found one yet. Most of the ones I found have pinned flash hiders on them and I don't want that. All right. So this one should be the upper left of the plate. This one will be dead center. Given our current climate in 2022 with the war conflict that's happening in Russia and Ukraine, I've been asked a few times in comments to test any 545 
or 762 by 39 in any of our body armor. And pretty much most 762 by 39 is not a threat against body armor unless it's the armor piercing incendiary rounds, but those aren't too common. What is more common is our 7N6 and the newer versions of that. So I have a worst case scenario for everyone. This is a 23.6 inch SSG82. It is a box fed bolt action in 545. I think it's from East Germany, early 80s, only 2000 built, only 600 in the US. Very unique little bolt gun here. I have four rounds of some 7N6. It has a steel core, but it's blunted, so it doesn't have a point on it, and it is mild steel. I do believe mid 30s on the B scale. Should be the upper top of the plate. Thirty eighty three. Hopefully, my monitor is still going. Let's walk these right in the line. Thirty ninety five. The steel case stuff is pretty sticky in this chamber. That's how I've read that it, that is a problem. And then this one I'll place in the lower left hand corner. Nice. Now we bring out some real speed. We've got our 22 inch TC compass with our turbo 556 suppressor on here. We've got M193. This is Independence. This is my known need for speed. 55 grain full metal jacket. Not all M193 is created equal. There's always a discussion about that. Just because it's marked M193 or 556 by 45 millimeters on the box, it's they're always not the same pressure. Be aware of that when you're buying ammunition. Typically that's why I do ammunition reviews or owning a chronograph definitely helps with that. This will be on the left side. About, yep, that's what we've been seeing today, about 3,300. And this will be on the right side, right in the Millitech word. A little low on that guy. Continuing off to the right. And last shot. Put this one in the lower right hand corner. I've mentioned it quite a few times, so hopefully those that watch don't get tired of me saying this, but for any newcomers, the beauty of polyethylene is you can put a lot of shots on the plate, even sometimes inside of the two inch, you know, minimum recommended that the NIJ shoots at, as long as you're not using any threats that aren't designed for the plate. So we've got seven and six right here. Number one, number two, we have our 16 inch M855. We have our 10, 10 inch M855, number one, number two. Another 7N6, there is our subsonic A1, there is our M193, there's another M193, there is the M855 number 3, here is our 16 inch number 2, another M193, and then an M193 down here. Now this one, I will not consider that a fair hit because somehow that 7N6 I literally shot on the edge. I've done that a few times today, might be the sun in my eyes but we won't consider that a fair hit. We will mark it as a penetration if it does go through. Ruh oh raggy. We have penetrations on our 16 inch M855 and our sub, oh, which one's that guy? That was our M855 16 inch. Our subsonic. We'll have to peel this back cover off to see if it went through. It is, does have some, 
foam back here, I think. Yep, got a little bit of foam there. So we'll peel these off when we're done and confirm our hits. This M193 down here, that's starting to, looks like it's delaminating the plate. And then our 7N6 from that, it looks like it penetrated because of that nasty hole there. And it literally is on the edge, maybe hard to see, but it's pushing its way through, kind of like on the Shot Stop 338 test. There appears to be a penetration right there. That's from the 16 inch M855. So this particular polyethylene is not good at stopping our M855, even from the 10 inch. As far as back face goes, I would say that guy from M193 is the worst so far. That's 43 millimeters. That's a little concerning on a 5.56 shot, but again, it, it, it is closer than two inches from the edge. Now the final threat for our Militech plate is our 308 M80 ball. That is the NIJ level three and upcoming NIJ 07 RF one and two threat specification. But I've got a little more speed now. I've got a 24 inch Savage Access 110 tactical left hand bolt. I've got the JK armament rifle kit up there. I like this gun because it takes the A6 or Accuracy International standard magazines. So these are non-proprietary. This is just a P mag. These are like 40 bucks, totally affordable, and I can put 10 rounds in them. I have some M80 ball from Winchester Lake City. They are running the Lake City plant currently in 2022. Based on our prior testing, we should see well over the specification of 2750. So we should see around 2900, I think, today. A little advantage for me. That's why I'm the king of armor destruction. I'm going to put this one right, hopefully above where it says Militech, right in the dead center of it. Nice. I think I was in the E, so I was off to the right a little bit. 29.49. This one I'll place on the second to bottom row. I'm off by about two inches. I took the scope off the Lapua and I need to get my holdovers changed off a little bit. So this one I'll place right next to it. Okay. Still getting good velocity, 29 something. And then that's all she wrote, folks. I have some questionable hits on this plate. Shot number one was right here. That is within one inch. That is not a fair hit. And again, we're going well above the velocity for M80 ball. Shot number two was right here. Shot number three was right here. And shot number four, that again is not a fair hit. That is one inch. Ruh oh raggy. <laughs> So we have a penetration right there from that non-fair hit and then likely shot number four from that one. It stopped that one without any problems. So this one was stopped and likely that hit right there went through, but these two were stopped. Very interesting. Our back face is approaching the upper limits. Again, in an official NIJ test, this could be more. Now there's lots of holes and garbage in my clay. Now the part that I like the best is our teardown. This gives us insight into the types of materials that the armor company could be using, but without any labels, we don't know 100%. Here's our back cover. It's just a fabric cover. Now here's polyethylene, a few layers of it. And here's a foam that we normally see on the back was stuck in between and we've got more polyethylene. Polyethylene is white in nature there is some kind of chemical or adhesive that has been applied to this and i don't it may be hard to see but it is a blue teal greenish color and it smells kind of funny don't know how to describe that smell chemical smell but it doesn't smell like any of the other polyethylene plates that i tested today they've got a little bit of foam on the outside edge to protect against drops 
Although with a polyethylene plate, you really don't have too much of a concern with dropping it. I'm not sure if it is pressed. I mean, this front layer is in one good section, but these back layers right here look like they can be peeled away like a foam, like a book, I should say. Well, everyone, I was surprised about our internal construction of our Millitech 100% pure polyethylene plate. That's one of the reasons I love doing the teardowns because it provides me with information and provides you with that same information as well. This is probably the first time that I've seen foam this thick, one quarter of an inch or give or take or so behind polyethylene. Originally when I you know, was feeling the plate, I thought it was through and through polyethylene and that extra thickness is why I designed some of the threats that I shot at it. I had asked Millitech why they use such thick foam on the back of this plate, and pretty much they said it's to aid in adding more buoyancy to the plate and to help with blunt force trauma. I also asked them why the polyethylene has this bluish green tint to it, and they said that's resin or adhesives that they use to help bond these particular PE layers together. I would say overall for a pure polyethylene plate, it performed right within its typical level three standards. I also have to print a retraction on one of the penetrations. Our M855A1 subsonic did penetrate. I found the hole right there and ran a little screwdriver through and the hole goes all the way through the plate. It was kind of hard to see because when I peeled all this off, this pretty much covered it up and it was next to another penetration. And that's all I have for you folks. At the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who help make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star followers. I got one of those now too. The link is in the description if you want to help out. Number two is our friends over at Uprise Armory who in full transparency sent us a pair of those for me to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.